go ahead and start our presentation. Thank you all for joining us today for the Bright Pattern Summer Release presentation. This is release 316. Um, we're really excited to show you guys some new, new functionality as well as some of our customer requested features. Um, a lot of this release includes great new supervisor tools as well as new integrations with CRM and workforce management partners. Today, um, you're going to be hearing from myself as well as Nick Dininger. Nick Dininger has been in the industry for over 15 years and has some really great experience. He's our senior solutions engineer at Bright Pattern, and I am the marketing manager, and I'm going to be your moderator for this presentation. We will get to any questions that we have. Um, if you have any, you can go ahead and put them in the GoToWebinar panel and we'll make sure to get to them at the end of the presentation. So on the screen are just some of the highlights from this release. Uh, like I mentioned, there are several new supervisor tools, new integrations, as well as additional customization with our wallboard builder and web chat. Uh, one that we're specifically excited about is our new wallboard builder. Um, it looks really sleek and um, it's fully customizable. It, um, so you can define style, color, font, data, metrics, as well as placement. And it's a really easy to use point and click configuration, uh, which is shown on the screen right here. And uh, this just kind of shows some of the customization that you can have, whether it be a lighter screen or darker screen, some of the different colors and fonts, et cetera. And Nick will show you a little bit more on how to do this when we get to the demo section. Um, also, the last couple of years, we've been working to expand our integration ecosystem so that our customers can take full advantage of all of their software and all of the data in their contact centers. So in this release specifically, we integrated with ServiceNow, Pipkins, and Monet. Uh, to show you ServiceNow, this is a screenshot of the ServiceNow integration, which enables more seamless customer conversations. Um, it is omni-channel, so it's voice, messaging, email, and video, all within the ServiceNow CRM. And uh, it has all of the traditional benefits you see with an omni-channel platform. So it addresses service inquiries faster. It provides reduced agent load with the automation and uh, also improved customer experience. Um, in addition, we did do the Pipkins and Monet integration for more advanced forecasting and scheduling. Uh, up on this slide, you see some metrics of kind of what some contact centers were able to achieve when um, bringing workforce management integration into their contact center. So with those integrations, you can see great benefits. And this shown right here is actually our most requested feature by customers. Um, it is supervisor sub teams and all team views. So now supervisors can drill down on specific teams and agents. Uh, this can be helpful for keeping an eye on underperforming or new agents. And it can also help consolidate group views, um, which is helpful for sharing responsibilities across supervisors and teams. And one that I'm particularly excited about, which kind of seems like a futuristic feature to me, is our new web chat with proactive chat. There has been a lot of research um, over the last year on how proactive chat and contact center improves sales. Um, that number is sales increase of over 80%, as well as an average order value increase of 19%. So in this release, we kind of launched our web chat 2.0. It, like the wall boards, are completely customizable and also allow your agents to engage in proactive chat through different trigger events. And also in this is screen sharing and code routes. Also in this release, we did update our mobile applications in Android and iOS. And with that, I'm just going to go ahead and pass it over to Nick to show you these features in action. 
All right. Well, thanks, Shelby. Um, I'm really excited to show you guys some of the features that we've released here today. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start out here with the wallboard builder. Um, and just to double check, Shelby, you can see my screen here OK? Um, yes, I can. All right, excellent. So this is our new version of our wallboard builder. So what we've done is we've, we've created some out of the box wallboards. And I'm gonna go through some of the features on how to enable and how to configure and customize uh, some of this as well. So what you're seeing here is our, our wallboard. So we have a wallboard that's here. It's, it's built on a grid system, meaning you can resize the widgets to whatever size you want. You can customize the data. And I'm gonna show you some of these things. So the first thing I'll show you here is on this wallboard builder, we have a title for each for each wallboard essentially. So what this means is you can click on this little down arrow and there's gonna be a list of different wallboards. Uh, we have this notion of global wallboards as well. So you can have individual wallboards for specific people, maybe supervisors, maybe agents, but you can also push those same wallboards out to, uh, out to global, so everybody in the organization can see those same wallboards. We also have two different themes here. So we've got a light theme and a dark theme. We're gonna eventually, of course, add more theme customization. For right now, we've got dark and light, and I'll give you an example of both. So we've got this call center one, we've got uh, this multi-public one, and we've got uh, the different widgets that you can hover over. You can see real-time metrics that are happening. You can see real-time long calls. We've also added some functionality for agents ahead of me. So this is what the wallboard looks like when you're actually looking at it in a, in a production sort of setting. Uh, now up at the top right here are the different options that we've got. So you can delete them, duplicate them, you can import wallboards, you can export wallboards, and you can also push them to global. To, so what that means is you're taking the wallboard and pushing it uh, into a global pool of wallboards in order for everybody in the organization to view them. So if I click on edit, you're going to see here that we can edit the title up at the top. Uh, and then on the bottom right here, uh, actually, it's going to be on the top right hand corner of all the widgets. You can delete them. And then you can also look at the settings for each of those as well. So if I click on the settings, you can create a title and you can uh, create the, the columns that you want. So we have this, uh, this notion of agents ahead of me. So we've released uh, agents ahead of me widget that you can build, and it looks like this. So you'll have a name, a state icon, and state, and you organize it by top down. So what this means is an agent can look at this and see who's in line to get a call next. And then as those agents get calls, they'll drop uh, off the top of the list, and you can see which agents are ahead of you in the call queue. Um, in addition, you can enable or disable all these different widgets. You can uh, select each team for, you know, what are we going to show to these agents? If you click on that, you can see which teams, uh, as well as the different states of each agent as well. Um, and then, so we can, uh, you know, resize these. You'll see that you can grab these uh, along the grid, uh, and we can resize them to be whatever whatever size we want. We can move them around. They're just little, basically little tiles, and you can have them you know, whatever size makes sense for you to have. Um, so once we're done with that, we can save it. And, uh, you know, of course, we can we can go through these different wallboards as well. So going back to the, uh, the, the uh, call center wallboard, we're going to switch just back to that real quick. And then another thing I'm going to show you here is we've got a couple of different uh, privileges that need to be enabled in order to use this as well. So I'm gonna show you those in just a second. But again, this is this is the wallboard and you can create and customize. And again, you can hover over a lot of these different widgets if you're looking at it on a desktop setting, uh, as well as looking at it on a TV or a screen uh, somewhere else. So in terms of the privileges that you need, there's a, there's a couple of different new privileges that we've had in the roles. Uh, and they're all going to be down here. And um, it's going to be, you're going to need access to the real-time stats API, which is a privilege. You're also going to need, if you're allowing the person to customize them, you have to have the customized wallboards uh, privilege enabled for that role. 
And then if you want them to be able to push and pull global wallboards, you can use that privilege as well. So there's a couple of different privileges. Just make sure that those are added. And then uh, once we have access to the, the wallboard builder, you're able to look at it and you're able to create and customize it if you have uh, the appropriate privileges to do that. Uh, so feel free to ask us any questions on this. Again, we're really excited about it. I personally am really excited about it. We've been waiting for this for a while. We've had uh, several customers asking about this kind of functionality. So uh, once it's released, feel free to use it. Um, give us your feedback. We're, we're happy to hear about, uh, about that as well. All right, so that's the wallboard builder. What we're gonna do now is move on to chat uh, and our proactive, some of our proactive chat functionality too. So we've added uh, an additional messaging here. So under scenario entries under messaging, we've, uh, you'll, you'll wanna add a new uh, scenario, chat scenario entry here for, for proactive chat. And once you've got that, you'll you'll set it up typically as, as you've been setting it up before. So not much is gonna change here, but you'll have this uh, this chat widget functionality. Now I've already, I've already created one, but what you'll wanna do is click on add. And when you click on add, you're gonna get this little window here and that you're gonna put the title of what you wanna call it. And then you're gonna put a test URL there. And once you do that and save it, you'll click on open editor. And once you open this editor, it's going to bring you to this, this screen here. So you'll, what, what happens is we're gonna pull that, that URL into the, into the right-hand side here. And it's going to, uh, it's gonna show you the chat on the bottom right-hand corner here. So there's a couple of different things we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about styling and then we're gonna talk about proactive offers. So with the styling, there's different things you can change. So you can change the location, so you can decide which part of the page you wanna show that on. And then you can also change the, uh, the, the text color and the background color. So for example, if we wanna do you know, a white text uh, and a black background, you're gonna see it's, it's gonna update real time here. So previously what we had was, we had the ability to customize this, that hasn't changed, but what has changed is we've put a front end interface on this so that you can actually style it in the platform versus having to code it in HTML and, and CSS and JavaScript. We've actually added this functionality to make it really easy. So if you wanted to uh, you know, change the text size, uh, you could do that as well. You can choose what text you wanna show when agents are available. So you know, if you wanna say chat now, we are online, we can change it to that. You can also change the text of which, when no agents are available. Obviously we have agents available right now, so that won't change uh, in, this, in this demo. Um, and then of course, there's a couple of other features like showing after hours and things like that. So that is for the actual contact tab. We've also added the capability of, of actually customizing the chat widget itself. So when we look at the chat widget, you're gonna see here that here are all the uh, different stylings you can do. So, you know, my customer chat, you can change the title. It's gonna update that on there. So again, we can do real time here. We can show the agent's pictures. We can resize, uh, you know, the window height and width. Um, we can change the colors here. So for example, if we're looking at the border color, but we're also looking at the background color. So we can change the background color to black, of course. And size. the color changing it to green or changing it to you know a different color uh, maybe that's too bright we can go style back to you know white for example and black and then we can change l the the joined message text. So there's a couple of other things we can change here. So in activity warning text and things like that. So you can, for example, we can, we can do this and change what the text is that we've, that we've done. So, so that custom, it's just a couple of examples of how we can customize the chat widget, but I'm really excited because we're able to do this very easily. It's not, you know, rocket science. It's very easy to come in here and customize the chat, especially if you need to customize on the fly. You don't need to have development resources configured in HTML and, and CSS. We've actually done all that for you and put a front end interface on it. So it's really exciting. It's really cool. 
and uh, I'm excited about it. So uh, the other thing I wanted to address while we're talking about chat, uh, aside from the styling, is going to be the proactive, uh, the proactivity chat options that we have. So the proactive offer tab is going to be here. You're going to enable it. You can put in some HTML content if you'd like. So we've, we've added that functionality. A couple of different things that you could add in terms of options where, you know, the chat button is enabled. You can offer call scheduling options. You can delay it uh, before removing that offer. So we're actually able to set up kind of the timers uh, and some of the contact options. So it doesn't just have to be chat. We can actually just offer a phone call or schedule a phone call with this person too uh, in a proactive manner. And then the other thing uh, in terms of proactive offers is going to be the conditions. So what what's going to trigger this proactive offer? So under conditions, we click on proactive offer conditions. We add that. We give it a title, proactive chat. And then if you click on add here, it's going to give us the different triggers that we have. So this is a way for us to configure how we're going to present this proactive chat to somebody. So we've got different things like, you know, if it's referred from a specific URL, whether or not they've chatted before, uh, specific days of the week, specific days of the month. So we can add multiple offers depending on the day or month or time of day even. Whether or not there's a cookie uh, number of pages they visit. So maybe they go to two, to two or three different pages and then you want to present this offer to them. So this allows us to get very, very granular with how we're going to present a proactive chat to a person. And not only that, we can actually present a unique offer to this person based on our criteria that we've set up. So, you know, even things like JavaScript variables being true or false, we can set that up. Um, you know, number of clicks on the page. So again, there's a lot of different options here that you'll have access to and you can feel free to use it, play around with it, set it up. Um, I think that we have a ton of options here in terms of proactive chat, but we're always happy to, to hear feedback if there's something additional that's needed. But I think we've covered uh, most, if not all, of the use cases that we've, uh, that we've designed this particular part of the product around. So we're really excited about that. Um, obviously, that's a huge addition for us, and, uh, and it's really cool. All right, so we'll just save this. Now, I'm gonna show you too that we have uh, the ability to do, to do chat, uh, proactive chat, and use this as well with, uh, with my, my ServiceNow uh, implementation. So we're gonna move on to, uh, to the ServiceNow piece. And what I've got here is, is ServiceNow. So ServiceNow, in case you, you, you aren't up to speed on it, They've recently decided um, that they want to be in the customer service space. So they have this, this platform uh, and we're, we're integrated with it. And we have, you can see our, our phone application on the right hand side here. And it's very similar to our other integrations. Uh, and we, you know, in that we have, you know, chat and the different agent states that, that we can, that we can accomplish. So uh, with chat, Let's go ahead and refresh that. So with chat here, uh, you can see that I changed my chat widget styling. So I click on that and it's gonna bring up my customer's chat. And then in ServiceNow, we have access to be able to uh, configure the different objects that we wanna look at. So I've initiated this, this chat from, from this customer page. And uh, again, it's, it's gonna be based on the, the customization that we've done that I showed you in the previous step that we had here. And then from an agent perspective, they'll get the data from the customer. So if the customer provides their name uh, or different information, we can actually put them through a workflow much the same way that we're doing today uh, with Salesforce. So I'll give you an example of that. Here's our chat flow. Uh, you know, we just, we've added these buttons down here. So we've got, uh, you know, create objects, screen pops, search, update. So we've got all of the things that you've, you're used to seeing in terms of Zendesk and, Serv and Salesforce, uh, but we can put them through a workflow here. We can screen pop a specific incident. We can find that incident in ServiceNow. We can look at different objects. We can create objects. So again, it's the same features and functionality that you've had before, only we're adding it uh, for ServiceNow, which is exciting. And then of course we find the agent and connect the call. Um, and then, so going back to ServiceNow here, uh, again, we can do the same things that we're, we're used to doing, you know, dispositioning, um, you know, adding different, different uh, updates and whatnot to here. 
Um, so we'll just go ahead and, and update that. And then uh, we can do a similar thing with voice calls. So with voice calls, uh, we'll just give you a quick example here. We'll dial out service now. We'll call service now, and our agent is going to get this uh, this this phone call from service now. And um, so voice and chat, all the chat channels, you know, Facebook, Messenger, all of these things can be used here too. So we'll go ahead and accept that. And now we're connected. And again, we're just popping an incident. We can look up the incident. We can look up the customer, the contact, the object, and we can present that to an agent. So it's it's very cool, and and I'm excited because ServiceNow is is really a great product. They've got a lot of features and functionality, and I'm excited that we're we're very tightly integrated with them. Um, and I'm sure that uh, more people will be using this uh, this integration as more people start to uh, adopt ServiceNow. So that's really exciting. All right, and then also what we've got, um, if, you know, if we search for a contact, for example, so contact, we've, we've added click to dial functionality here uh, as well. So by, you know, looking at Michael, for example, I can just uh, look at Michael and see, you know, his business, his business phone, and we can do click to dial as well from here too. All right, so uh, what we'll do real quick uh, is show you some of the supervisor functionality we've added. So I've got an agent logged in and a supervisor logged in. So my supervisor is right here and we've, we've added functionality for my sub team. So we have, previously we had the concept of, of just teams, like different teams that people are managing. Um, but now we have the concept of sub teams and I can show the supervisor agents on my specific sub team. So we can filter it that way uh, and we can just, we've added a, uh, a little block here for that as well. Now, um, we've got uh, a couple of different features. I'll talk about estimated wait time, but we did add an estimated wait time metric here as well. And so I'm going to explain that in just a second here. Um, but I want to show you real quick, we've added uh, a couple of a couple of reporting enhancements. And, and in terms of reporting enhancements, uh, we've added a couple of things. So We've added some custom uh, survey questions. So previously we had three. So it was the issue resolved, contact satisfaction, net promoter score. But what we've added is two additional fields. So you have now up to five. And of course we can report on all of those, um, but just really cool uh, feature that we added uh, based on customer request. We've also added a internal chat report. So with an internal chat report, what I mean by that is we can actually track and report on internal chats. So that's gonna be pushed out and available for you to use. Previously, we weren't able to report on this, but we've added some features and functionality as well as an out of the box report for internal chats. So now you're able to go and run that report and see all of the internal chat messages sent by agents if you need to. So that's gonna be there and available for you. All right. So that's some of the reporting enhancements. Now, another thing that we added is the estimated wait time improvements. So these are really cool. We've added estimated wait time per service in our stats API. So if you're using our stats API today, we've added the estimated wait time per service. And again, we've added also this metric here for estimated wait time. So we can look at that per service. And in addition, we can update the estimated wait time for each interaction. So the supervisor will be able to see the real-time stats for estimated wait time. We've added it in the stats API and we update it for each interaction. Um, so in addition, the algorithm for estimated wait time was, was changed a little bit. So we did a lot of research. We, we put money into research and development for estimated wait time. We've done some scientific research. And uh, what we found was we, we could improve our algorithm a little bit. So our algorithm now looks at the beginning and the end of the day uh, and it's calculated between all agents and all calls. So what this allows for is our algorithm to be more precise and responsive, and it makes for a more accurate wait, estimated wait time for customers in queue. So we've changed that algorithm a little bit, and it should be more accurate, and you should be able to get your customers the exact estimated wait time. Uh, again, it's based on different variables, and we've, uh, we've added that as, as a big feature as well. Um, okay, so that is estimated wait time. That's some of the important reporting enhancements that we've made. 
Now, there's a couple other things that I want to mention here. Now, we've got there's certain things that um, we can't really show uh, as effectively, so I, I figure we'll just we'll just talk about them just so that you guys can understand some of the use cases around them. So we've added some features and functionality for multiple Salesforce accounts. So we we've had some customers that they have multiple departments and multiple Salesforce accounts and domains. So occasionally agents would need to use more than one account. We also work with several BPO clients that also needed this type of feature because they run campaigns for multiple clients that have multiple Salesforce accounts. So we've added the ability to utilize multiple Salesforce accounts. So as you're running campaigns for multiple clients using Salesforce, you can now set up and deploy multiple Salesforce accounts. Of course, it's going to be the uh, in the integrations tab um, in the uh, in the UI here as well. And I can just show you that real quick. If we go to um, integration accounts, we've got one for ServiceNow, and of course, we can uh, you know add an account for for the Salesforce uh, piece as well. We've also added two new workforce management. Uh, applications here and so we've added real-time feeds for Pipkins as well as Monet and this is as a result of customers wanting to use those those are two great solutions they are really tailored for call center or contact center industries and we've added them recently and we're pushing out those additions uh, in our in our 316 release so we're really excited about that um, so the other thing that we added as well is uh, Zendesk uh, activity history on unsolicited SMS. So previously, there was uh, there was something happening where if somebody sent an unsolicited SMS and nobody was logged in, it, it would go to that agent. What we've added is if somebody sends an unsolicited SMS now, it will append to the, the message to an existing ticket so that it actually, we, we know where it goes, we can append it to the ticket, and this is as a result of a customer just asking for this and, and wanting to use that piece of it. So that's really cool too. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, some, some items that we've added that are really more specific to partners and service providers. So we've added some additional service provider specific items. These are more. These won't really apply to a lot of people that might be on the call, but it'll apply to our service providers that are providing the service to others. So I'm just going to keep it really high level and go through them real quick. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to answer those. So we've added options request support for the calls. We've added the ability to rewrite the Annie on inbound calls. So what that means essentially is if I call from my office phone and you know, we call to a specific DID. Well, we can rewrite the ante when it goes to, uh, say, a BPO that's taking uh, taking calls for multiple clients. We, we they want to know the 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 caller ID of the client versus the actual person. So we've added that ability. We've added a configurable from domain as well. Uh, we've added uh, the agent caller IDs in pre in the preview campaign. So what this is for is if you're if you're running a preview campaign and you have multiple agents and they leave their phone number, um, previously it was just one phone number. Uh, so you would do a preview campaign, it would be one call ID, they call back, they may not get, they may just go to a queue or they may not get to that same agent. Well, what we've added is the ability to create a caller ID for each agent so that the agent can leave their phone number on the same campaign, it just has to be one campaign. And then you leave your number as an agent on their voicemail and then the person will get that number or see the call ID and call it back and reach that same agent in their personal queue. So that's a really, if you're running preview campaigns, I think that's a, a huge thing for customer service because you're able to get to that same agent and, and sort of deal with them the same way instead of having to call a bunch of places and trying to get to that same person. This just makes it a lot easier and, and customer service friendly. Custom data and SIP headers, again, that's kind of some of the related to the other telephony aspects that we've we've added and then uh, the ability to transfer and avoid trombones so what this is uh, is essentially if you needed to do a trunk to trunk transfer what was happening was it would create two calls instead of one at the carrier level so what we've done is we've uh, we've rolled out some updates so that it creates one call not two so if you're integrating with for example an aspect prophecy system 
Uh, it makes the transfer seamless and without trombone, trombones and only one call. So it used to be that there was an issue where the call could potentially be sent back and forth. Calls may accumulate. It would create latency uh, and additional calls that were unneeded. So it was kind of, you know, if you scale that up, obviously that creates some issues. So we've, we've added some functionality around that transfer piece. And it helps relieve some of those issues when doing trunk to trunk transfers or SIP to SIP transfers. Um, so it makes it so that it's one call instead of two, which is which is a lot better from, from a management perspective, especially. Uh, and in addition, we've added some additional security features, mostly by request. So we've added read-only access in the service provider interface. So if you're providing service to your clients, we've added uh, an option for you to be able to create a uh, an account, a role with read-only access to that service provider interface, and what this is what this is typically used for is troubleshooting. So if you want to give a client access to be able to see what the configuration is, but not make any changes, that's why we added that because it helps with from a troubleshooting perspective and say, hey, I see this configuration is like this. You know, why is it like this? It it just some people had requested for that so we've added it in uh, so the additional ip access login restrictions so we've added privileged ips uh, and what that means is we've got so if we look in the roles we've got a, an additional privilege for that so it's going to be privileged ip access range right here and then if you come down to security uh, and it's system access restrictions we've added this privileged access IP range as well. So previously everything was here except for this uh, section. And so you can add different uh, addresses and uh, restrict from a security perspective what you know what IPs are, are going to be used there. So that's that's again by uh, by customer request. User profile modification restrictions really is just for locking specific data like name and email. You can you can now lock that so that people can't make any changes to that. And finally, we've added user creation date and last login date as well. Uh, and then finally, we have some miscellaneous items that we've added that uh, are cool just for you guys to know about. So long SMS is now supported. So previously, it was limited to 160 characters, but we've actually added features and functionality to be able to do long SMS instead. Uh, mandatory service selection for outbound calls. This is an option that we've added under general settings. So if you go to general settings, you'll see now that we have require service on outbound calls. Basically what this means is if an agent is doing an outbound call, we can tie it to a specific service. And not only that, we will require that they choose that um, and it's, it's enabled here and they'll have to pick a service in order to do, uh, do an outbound call. If you're using our JAWS integration, now a lot of a lot of you may not be familiar with this, but we have a JAWS uh, integration as well as some of those others like Zoom Text. This is for uh, visually impaired folks. So there's, believe it or not, a lot of call centers or contact centers out there that do visually, they hire visually impaired people. And we already have an integration. What we've done with this version is we've, uh, based on some feedback that we got, we've added a couple of additional command confirmations. So things like on hold, hold, mute, uh, just some additional features of functionality to make the experience, the user experience overall improved for visually impaired folks that are using our, our integration. We, we've added improved case search by email address. So previously it was you were able to search for subject uh, and body, but now you can actually search by email address uh, in the email system. We've added a Linux soft phone. Uh, now this is available by uh, by request. Um, and previously we didn't, we had support for Windows and Mac. Um, we had to use a different Linux soft phone essentially if you're using Linux, but we built our own Linux soft phone, Linux version of that soft phone for 316. If you need that, please reach out, let us know, and we're happy to uh, to provide that to you as well. And then a user management API. This is basically for users that, you know, you need to create, read, update, delete. Those types of functions are now available uh, through an API. So, uh, so that's a pretty high level overview of what we've got. Uh, I'll wrap up by saying that uh, this version is going to be available to selected partners by the end of August. 
and we're planning to upgrade the production system in the second part of September for general release. And uh, again, I'm really excited about this and uh, I hope everyone on the call is as well. And with that, I will turn it back to Shelby. Thanks, Nick. Um, so we're gonna open it up for Q and A. Um, we did get a couple of questions as well as comments. Uh, one of those comments was actually that they weren't able to see my screen during my slide presentation. Um, so I wanna make sure, Nick, can you see my screen right now? I do, yeah. Okay, and um, I apologize if others couldn't view my screen. It might have been an error on my end. So I will make sure later today to email everyone that signed up both my slide presentations and our full recording of the demo. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into questions. Um, you said when it's gonna be released to select partners. Do you know when Aspect Zipwire customers are gonna have these features? I don't, unfortunately. Um, that's something we can certainly follow up on. Okay. And then another question, um, has the chat API been updated with new functionality and is there documentation if we have a custom widget? Uh, the documentation update will follow uh, the release. We have every, every, almost everything ready and uh, um, I'll check if, uh, um, you could contact me, Sergey Menshikov at brightpatterns.com um, if you'd like uh, an advanced uh, advanced copy of the API. To, okay. Thanks, Sergey. I'll reach out to um, this customer and get you guys linked up. Perfect. Um, any other questions? I don't have any right now. No, I, see, uh, I see another one is the GUI for soft phones changing across all channels. It, the, the soft phone is not it's not changing. It's just gonna. It's just basically a different version. If you're using the ServiceNow integration, um, so it the soft phone layout isn't isn't going to change. It's going to be exactly the same. Thanks, Nick. I didn't see that one. It looks like we've got a couple more coming in as well. Is there more detail on the user management API? Uh, unless Sergey, you have some more details on that. I think we're going to be putting out documentation on the user management API. Well, uh, it's uh, in essence, it's 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 a RESTful API that lets you add and remove uh, uh, agents and update their properties, such as skills and uh, uh, team membership. Essentially, what whatever is uh, available through Excel, the same functionality through REST. All right, excellent. Okay, the next question is, can you address the scheduled callback feature? I'm assuming that we're talking about the proactive chat piece. Um, um, uh, can I, um, uh, so uh, yeah, we, we have a functionality even right now in the web-based chat uh, to start call immediately after a telephone number comes into agent. So in the chat configuration, uh, in the, um, form where we collect the information before uh, the uh, interaction starts um, that form could be copied and pasted into the web web page form so that it doesn't look like a chat widget it does look as a uh, invitation for a call now um, if, if we check the call option then this form could be used by one click connecting a, uh, a customer who requests call with an agent for the telephone. We will be using chat subsystem to initiate that, but uh, for customer experience, it will look like uh, I request a telephone call from a web page and I get it once I click call button. All right. Great. Thanks, Sergey. Um, the next question Has there been an update to lock down the user profile, meaning agents cannot update photos, names, etc.? Yes, yeah, there has. Uh, user profile modification restrictions are are a part of this update. So we, we have addressed that. Okay, and um, has the issue with saving agent skill set been resolved? Example, if we move a user from team A to team B and back to team A, their skill set is reset to default. And can the skill set be saved? 
I believe that's a part of this update too. Sergey, are you able to confirm that? We may have to follow up on that as well. Um, I believe it has been resolved, but I will double check. Okay. And then yeah. the other one here, uh, news on Scenario Engine for email channel allowing us to make evaluations on before agent delivery. Um, not sure if that's a part of this update, but we'll we'll follow up on that one too. Hey, and it looks like that's all of the questions we have. Um, if you do have any more, you can email them to marketing at Bright Pattern if you want, um, or Greg Kelly, Sergey, anyone you you wish to contact. And before you guys all head off on your day, I do want to thank you not only for joining us today, but also for providing feedback. We've asked a lot of customers to, to submit testimonials and online reviews, and we really do want to thank you for supporting us in that way. We have been able to be positioned as a leader in a GERT runner quadrant, as well as win several awards this quarter. And um, it's really all thanks to you guys. Um, if you haven't submitted a review yet but would like to here are a couple of the online review sites we're listed on um, specifically capterra here would be a great one to leave a review on um, but other than that uh, we just want to thank you for joining us today and uh, nick and sergey thank you for joining as well you're welcome thanks everyone for for taking the time out of your day to check out our new features we're excited about it and we hope you are too yeah. Great. Thanks. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, Shelby. Thanks, Sergey. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye.